the Joe Rogan experience. Boom, and we're live. 12 rules for life. So without reading this, so what you're saying is, that's what I was like. <laughs> <laughs> There's only 12 things you need to know in life, right? That's it? Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. This, um, this interview that you just did with this woman, uh, Kathy Newman, she, was that in the UK? It was, Channel 4, UK. Um, I just went, I, I, I felt bad, but I was also laughing. I went to her Twitter page to read, like, and in, with each one of her tweets, no matter what she says, someone writes underneath it. So what you're saying is, and then some ridiculous, but by the way, the, your fans were mocking her, but politely, non-aggressively, there, I, I didn't read any rude things, like there was no, it was, there was no insults or, there was, well, maybe a few insults, but there's no swears. It was just playful mocking of the interview that she did with you, because the interview was ridiculous. It was a ridiculous interview. I mean, I, I listened to it or watched it several times. I was like, this is so strange. It's like her determination to turn it into a conflict. To It's one of the issues that I have with television shows. Yeah. Because they have a very limited amount of time, and they're trying to make things as salacious as possible. They want to yep. have these sound bites, these clickbait sound bites. And she just went into it incredibly confrontational, not trying to find your actual perspective, but trying to force you to defend a non non realistic perspective. Yes, well I was the I was the hypothetical villain of her imagination, essentially. Yeah. Well what happened what was interesting too, the way it, it played itself out, because I met her in the green room beforehand, you know, she was being made up and then they put a little bit of powder on me and we had a friendly kind of interchange and then we went and sat in front of the cameras and for a couple of minutes, you know, before before the show got rolling and we had a pretty pleasant back and forth and then as soon as the cameras went on, she was a completely different person. Oh. And I thought, oh, I see. It's a trick. I see what's going on. Yeah. Yeah, well, so so that kind of alerted me to, well, the fact that there was something rotten in the state of Denmark, let's say. <laughs> yeah, but, you know, this is also why YouTube is going to kill TV. Because television, by its nature, all of these narrow broadcast technologies, they, re they rely on forcing the story, right? Because yeah. it has to happen now. It has to happen, in, like, often in five minutes. Because they only broadcast five minutes of that in interview. They did put the whole thing up on YouTube. To their credit. Yeah. It... it it hasn't ceased to amaze me yet. I think that they thought that the interview went fine. That's the scuttlebutt I've got from sort of behind the scenes because I've, you know, I know some people who know what's going on at Channel 4 and they're shell-shocked by the response, you know. And, and then, of course, there is the counter-response. The Guardian the next day published a paper or published an article saying that, you know, the head of Channel 4 had to call in police security because of threats. You know, well, first of all, you can call the police in about anything. And they never did detail out exactly what the threats were. You know, but then about 20 newspapers picked that up and went for the, well, Kathy Newman is now being harassed by an army of online trolls for doing nothing but doing her job, which, well, I, and then there was a backlash against that in the press. And so it's been a, well, I, what well, do you say about Well, someone took that? an audit of the, um, the actual in interchanges that... Yeah between fans and her. And there was way more negative ones coming your way. Yes, that were seriously negative. Yeah, that's yeah, right. Seriously negative, yeah. violent, harassing, just rude. There were way more. Yeah. And no one picked up on that at all. It yeah. was all the narrative was, she's a victim, yeah. even though she was highly aggressive on, in this. But I, know, I, she's I a like funny victim. It's not yeah. like she's not successful. Yeah. You know, it's well, like at some point you think you should have to hand in your victim card. I think like when you go to an Ivy League university, it's like right then and there. You, you get to hand, hand in. in. Yeah, because you don't get to be oppressor and oppressed at the same time. That's just too much. Well, one of the things that you pointed out was when you were talking about competition for very lucrative jobs, and you were saying, look what you've done. Like, mm. you, you must have had to work here. And she proudly was saying how, how hard she had to work yeah. to get there. I'm like, well, yes, of course. No one's going to hand this to you. No, this definitely is why, not. And this is why you were saying you are opposed to equality of outcome. Equality which, of outcome. We, I can't imagine anything we could possibly strive for in our society that would make it into hell faster than equality of outcome. <laughs>